For nearly two years, since Genshin Impact's release back in September 28, 2020, the focus of the game's combat revolved around the seven elements Pyro, Hydro, Electro, Cryo, Dendro, Animo, and Geo. These elements would define almost every facet of the game's experience, being responsible for establishing characters, combat interactions, team compositions, reactions, and so much more. But prior to version 3.0, only six elements were available to us as for reasons only known to the game developers, Dendro was not to be instituted until the official release of Sumeru, the land of the Dendro Archon. Two years later, the first playable Dendro characters were brought to the game. Tinari, Kolei, and Aether and Lumine's Dendro variant, and with them, two new Dendro-based reactions were introduced to complement its sole current reaction, Burning. Those two are Bloom and Quicken, Dendro plus Hydro and Dendro plus Electro respectively. It took a while, but we finally have the fully completed elemental experience. Adding on to that, there's now a substantial number of units for each of the existing six elements, giving the player base more ways to experiment and figure out just how valuable each one really is. Suffice to say, now is a good time to find out which elements are the strongest in Genshin Impact, so let's get started. Before we continue, I just want to give a shout out to this video's sponsor, Factor. Factor is a meal prep service that delivers handmade meals right to your door, pre-prepared and ready to eat within 2 minutes or less. And you have a ton of options to choose from, so if you're doing keto, trying to lose weight, or follow a vegetarian or vegan lifestyle, they have everything for you. The menu features an extensive selection of at least 27 meal options and 33 add-ons like smoothies, shakes, dessert, and more. They pride themselves on catering to every customer's individual lifestyle by letting them decide how many meals they want per week, if they feel like skipping a week, any specific food preferences or allergies, so on and so forth. I'm big on working out myself and I just spent this past spring and summer cutting down using meal preps. They help me save time on cooking so I can focus more on making videos. It's a really handy service for those of you who still want to eat good food even if you can't find the time or energy to cook. So if you're interested, head on over to go.factor75.com and use the code POGVARS130 which is also in the description and you'll get $130 off across 6 boxes. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring the video but for now let's get back into it. To some of you watching, the video's thumbnail may look familiar, and that's because yes, I'm recycling the thumbnail that I used for the exact same video I made during the fall of last year. I think it's appropriate to remake it for two reasons, first being the obvious, Dentro is now playable, and second, the old episode was constructed with a whole lot of opinion and not a lot of facts. Might as well kill two birds with one stone. I'm aware that even though we have enough empirical data to draw reasonably accurate conclusions on Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, Animo, Electro, and Geo, it might be somewhat premature to figure out where Dendro will be ranked among the seven. We have only three playable characters, and version 3 hasn't even been out for more than a month. Even theory crafters who've been hard at work figuring out what Dendro is capable of can't ascertain its power level, although they do have some initial understanding of the element based on how it interacts with other elements. Besides, in the grand scheme of things, the scope of an element's presence in totality won't fluctuate too much with the addition of new units. Not saying it has no effect, the Electro element received a ton of attention following Shogun's release, but outside of coincidental or synergistic interactions, she didn't have as much of an influence on Electro as a whole. The buffs to transformative reactions played a bigger part in elevating Electro's usability. Shogun was just an overpowered unit who just happened to be Electro. That being said, each element's standing is founded on the basis of their usage in combat. Consequently, where I place them will be guided by the pool of available characters in each one. In Dendro's case, we don't have a Dendro healer, an all-purpose Dendro support, a Dendro unit with crowd control, etc. Even so, the main purpose of this video isn't to decide on what is meta and what isn't. I'll be looking at every element from a fundamental standpoint, how well it's integrated into the gameplay experience on top of its practical usability. As always, the rankings are based on some degree of personal opinion, although I'll do my best to be as objective as possible. And one last thing, I'm hoping you already know this, but do not take this as a factual statement on what elements and by extension their characters you should be going after and what elements are not worth. At the end of the day, Everyone is usable given enough investment, and remember, circumstances play a big role, there's a ton of interchangeability. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. At number 7 we have Geo. Unlike its peers, our current understanding of it is that it's a very insular element. Not counting the newcomer Dendro, it was the least represented affinity in the game for quite some time. But through version 2, several units made their way into the roster, Goro, Ito, and Yunjin. While there were certainly welcome additions to the game, the Geo element in its entirety is arguably the weakest. For one, its sole elemental reaction is Crystallize, which occurs when Geo mixes with Pyro, Hydro, Electro, or Cryo, dropping an elemental shard that grants a shield based on the corresponding element. Even though shields are honestly broken in Genshin, the strength of elemental shards doesn't climb very far, even with elemental mastery and or bonus shield power. Furthermore, there are many units who can provide their own shields, and even more who can provide a token measure of healing. Crystallize deals no bonus damage, effectively rendering Geo with no worthwhile elemental reactions that are conducive to the battle environment we have right now. 
Additionally, the majority of its roster has abilities that were designed to synergize with other Geo characters, implicitly discouraging interactions with non-Geo characters. In other words, Geo units are hamstrung not only by their element having an underwhelming and superfluous reaction, but their own abilities requiring they be fielded with other Geo characters. The only thing maintaining Geo's relevance is that its representatives are very powerful on their own. Ito, Goro, Zhongli, Albedo, and Yunjin are decently strong, but that has more to do with their own merits and not the benefits of their element. To their credit, however, if you decide to commit to a mono Geo team, you could dish out staggering amounts of damage while being equally invincible. But I feel like that detracts from the main purpose of the game's elemental system, being all about mixing and matching characters and elements together. Coming in at number 6, I bet a lot of you are going to be surprised to see this one. We have Pyro. For much of the early days of Genshin, especially the first year, Pyro was colloquially agreed on as the strongest offensive element in the game, purely because it was the most populated element in the game, leaving others like Electro and Geo rather underdeveloped. And while still boasts a respectable lineup of units, some of which may even be considered the best, Pyro itself has lost a lot of market share and priority now that we have more characters to play with for the other elements. True to its thematic nature, Pyro is all about force, with its elemental reactions overloaded, vaporized, and melt lending credence to its initial success. The cast members also echoed that sentiment. Almost every decent Pyro character is regarded for their offensive benefits, either through their own damage output or through supplementation of damage. Despite their early release dates, Hu Tao and Shangling have maintained their placement as two of the best DPS units of all time, while Bennett has been in contention for the best unit in the game, period. Pyro's drop in the rankings is through no fault of its own, rather a shift in what players value in combat. The game's advancements in power and damage have come a long way in the past two years. Now that we have a wide selection of characters, we've been able to discover many ways to increase our combat efficiency outside of big dick damage. In essence, Pyro is still incredible, but the rest of the competition has finally caught up. And since there are so many other ways to kick names and take ass, it comes down to what more they can offer beyond that. Specialized teams like Chain Freeze and Taser can output comparable DPS to standard Melt and Vaporize teams while providing more crowd control. And we're at a point where every element has premier damage dealers. That's where Pyro falls behind. It's nothing but power, in a landscape where there's no shortage of it. Up next, at number 4.5, and I say 4.5 because I and several others are unsure as to which one is better since they're so dependent on each other, we have the new transfer student, Dendril. There were a lot of mixed opinions on how impactful Dendril was going to be for the meta, but for the most part where we ended up settling on was that it's not bad. Not as dominating of a force as the likes of Animo or Hydro, but it certainly performs where it needs to. Contrary to Vaporize and Melt where you want to condense as much force into a single powerful blow to multiply it, Dendro prioritizes quantity over quality, at least for half of its contents. For the uninitiated, the Quicken reaction diverges into Aggravate or Spread, increasing the damage of subsequent applications of Dendro or Electro by a flat number. Keyword, flat, regardless of how much the original attack does. So the goal is to get as many activations of either element as humanly possible. And which element is known for death by a thousand cuts? Electro. As for Bloom, it creates a Dendro core that explodes after 6 seconds, and depending on which element that follows after, you get different effects. If you tag on Electro, it auto-targets nearby enemies and does increased Dendro damage, whereas tagging with Pyro, if it wasn't obvious, explodes it instantly for more damage. Case in point, Dendro's new reactions entail setting things up for follow-up elements, and depending on which elements those are, different benefits take place. This makes it a two-step equation rather than a one-step, such as all the ones preceding it. This also means that three different elements can achieve one reaction. While this makes it very flexible in the same fashion as Animo, it's also heavily reliant on a certain playstyle with specific units. Both Quicken and Bloom's damage is predicated on subsequent applications, but that also means the only time you actually consider the Dendro element's own contributions is when you're achieving spread. Everything else, Aggravate, Hyper Bloom, and Burgeon are dependent on Electro, Hydro, and Pyro respectively. So fundamentally speaking, Dendro is a very useful element, but unless I'm missing something, it has nothing to call its own. As a disclaimer, I'm not saying being a setup element is a bad thing. The entire purpose of elements is to mutually set each other up. Some of the best team compositions only exist by virtue of proper setup. However, it's unclear as to whether or not Dentro is ranked higher than the remaining elements from what we know so far. And that brings us to the other 4.5th place element, whose position is also rather inconclusive right now. Oh, how the tables have turned. It's no exaggeration to say that Electro had a rough start. With its underwhelming reactions, in comparison to the overwhelming force of Pyro prior to version 2, a lot of people, myself included, placed it firmly in the bottom of the rankings. But thanks to Buster Transformative reactions as well as more serviceable units being made available to us, Electro is becoming more and more relevant in this day and age, and with the help of Dendro, it's now possible to achieve multiple reactions in a short period of time by circumventing the game's internal cooldown in a roundabout way. 
As I'm sure you know by now, Electro prefers to strike rapidly. Many within its roster excel at protracted fights, having reactions and energy charge to complement that. Though not as much power is loaded into one big explosion, Electro's potential damage output can match or exceed Pyro's if given the right conditions, and it can achieve this without having to be in the limelight so to speak. Even before the advent of Dendro, Electro was essential in activating Superconduct. The only reason physical damage is even viable to begin with, and through Electro Charge and Overload, Taser teams have found a great deal of success. What augments Electro a lot better is that its reactions are equally beneficial to its end goal being as many applications as possible rather than a single one. That point is hammered home even further by its energy-based gameplay. Electro has fantastic elemental burst up time thanks to how many particles its units can generate. The reason it's tied with Dendro though is because I don't think the presence of Dendro alone is enough to propel it any higher than where it is now. Even so, I can very confidently say Electro ranks above Pyro and Geo, and is equal to if not marginally better than Dendro. That of course is subject to change in the foreseeable future. Before we move on, I want to clarify something. While this is a ranking video, the gaps between each element aren't equal in measure. Electro being in 4th place and Pyro in 6th doesn't make the former infinitely better than the latter by numbers alone. There are situations where Pyro can outperform Dendro, Electro, even Cryo, but in a general sense, if we go by hierarchy, these elements are very close together. The only one that's blatantly inferior to everyone else is Geo, and the only one that's blatantly superior to everyone else? Well, you'll have to keep watching to find out. Number 3 goes to Cryo. It's debatable as to whether or not Cryo is stronger than Electro and or Dendro given that of the DPS elements, it's the only one that doesn't directly interface with Dendro, but I personally believe it inches out ever so slightly. There are two things Cryo is known for, pressure and freeze, more emphatically freeze. Most if not all of its units possess a way to exert their pressure for long periods of time, usually through abilities that persist even after they swap out. Ayaka's burst, Ganyu's skill and burst, Diona's burst, Shinho's burst, Chichi's skill and passive, Rosaria's skill, Chongyun's skill, Kaya's burst, even Aloy's skill. The output of each one varies greatly, mind you, but they attest to how consistent the element is. Speaking of consistency, Frozen is debatably the most busted elemental reaction in the game. It deals no bonus damage, but what it does may as well be considered bonus damage. Rapid applications of Cryo and Hydro effectively stun enemies in place for a certain period of time. The kicker is that Frozen has no internal cooldown, or if it does, it's basically non-existent. With the right abilities, you can theoretically apply Freeze to a target for an indefinite period of time. And since the entire Cryo roster has units with long-lasting, wide-range periodic applications of Cryo, this is extremely easy to pull off. Additionally, Cryo's internal support is vast. Not only does it have a fantastic elemental resonance, but it also has a ton of Cryo damage bonus and resistance shred built into the aforementioned lingering effects. All in all, one of the most accessible elements in the game, with one of the most broken reactions in the game, and a very appealing theme of long-lasting pressure. Combine all that with an impressive amount of coverage in damage and support, and you'll find a staple element to fit into any party, one only surpassed by the remaining two. The silver medal belongs to Hydro, which I would consider the most adaptable element in the game based on reactions and its existing pool of characters. Admittedly, almost all of its fame stems from every Hydro 5 star being excellent in their respective fields, while one of the only two 4 stars in the game is tied with Bennett in terms of how efficient and user-friendly his support capabilities are. But that's just a pleasant coincidence more than anything else. Hydro is the catalyst for the other element's best reactions with the exception of Dendro. Electro Charge is Electro's most effective reaction at least prior to Aggravate, and the accompanying reaction to that is Hydro. Vaporize is Pyro's best reaction, and the accompanying element to that is also Hydro. Freeze is indisputably Cryo's best reaction, and once again, the accompanying element to that is Hydro. It's the sole reason behind many powerful team compositions, from Taser to Freeze to Vape because it's the other half of every meaningful reaction. Adding on to that, even though I said I wasn't going to attribute an element's ranking to its roster that much, this is an exception. Child and Ayato are two remarkably effective DPS units, while Kokomi, Mona, Yelan, and Shinto make achieving Hydro-based reactions quite trivial, especially the latter two. In regards to elemental reactions, Hydro is simultaneously the most important element and the least intrusive. It accomplishes everything that's required of it without occupying any more attention than it needs to. It powers virtually every combat and utility-based reaction in the game while its members perform spectacularly in every facet of Genshin's combat system except for one. Another thing is that Hydro's resonance was recently changed to boosting max HP instead of healing bonus, and a lot of its units synergize or directly scale off of max HP, making it even better. But even with all that, there's still one more element that towers above it. It should come as no surprise to anyone who's played this game for a while that Animo is the single most powerful element in Genshin Impact, by a wide margin. Take the overwhelming force of Pyro, the lasting pressure of Cryo, the setup of Dendro, the battery of Electro, and the fluidity of Hydro, and you get Animo. More than that, Animo surpasses every other element by virtue of its mechanical theme. Crowd Control 
The running motif is that its characters are specialized in corralling enemies together by literally blowing them around, either towards a standing location or a designated area, making anything and everything you want to do a lot easier. Want a chain freeze? You can force everyone into your cryo zone. You want to explode everyone with pyro? Everyone's stuck together, have at it. You want to bounce a million electro charge conductions around? Everyone's clumped up together. Animo ensures the consistency of every win condition in the game, without sacrificing any damage or utility in the process. If anything, it has some of the best utility. Swirl allows Animo to double as any one of the four combative elements at a time, Pyro, Hydro, Electro, and Cryo, causing it to deal the absorbed element's damage in a small area. Given that it forcibly repositions enemies, that makes it easy to apply the splash damage to maximum effect, and by extension, it lets Animo characters pull in all for one and gain the quirks of those four elements. In totality, Animo characters can vaporize, overload, melt, electrocharge, superconduct, and freeze by proxy. Moreover, Animo attacks are all massive in coverage, they do a ton of damage through elemental mastery which is prevalent in many of them, they have low cooldowns for their attacks, and a lot of supportive elements, including amplifying the damage of their entire team basically by existing. It's the closest thing to a flawless element you can ask for, there's never a situation where Animo is not useful, it lets you do everything the other elements can do, and, out of all the elemental artifact sets, Veritas and Venera is just straight up unfair for how versatile it is. One final thing, mobility. Animo is the best element for exploration, and for some players, that matters a lot. If you need more convincing, just look at how many people relentlessly begged Hoyo for Kazuha's rerun. No further proof is needed. I'm aware mobility isn't the reason everyone wanted Kazuha, but play along with it. Animo is overpowered. Ironic how Venti is canonically the weakest Archon, but he rules the strongest element. Alrighty, and there we have it. I know some people are going to ask about physical damage, and in all honesty, it's in a weird spot. The game's so focused on elemental damage, rightfully so, leaving physical damage somewhat neglected. I would say it's better than Geo, but not Pyro. As a reminder, please do not interpret this list as its representatives being weaker or stronger in a black and white sense. Each element has its golden goose and black sheep, or several of each. Understand that characters lend more credence to an element's potential, but their value is ultimately sourced by their own merits. Geo may be the worst element in the game, but it has very strong characters. It's more so the element itself does almost nothing to help them, therefore they need to be very strong on their own to make up the difference. Similarly to how there's no physical resonance or physical multipliers to supplement Eula, hence why she has such ridiculously overinflated scaling. So, if you disagree with my list, feel free to leave your own elemental rankings in the comments down below. Let's see what the rest of you have to say. Also, a special shout out to the coaching mains for helping me make this video, you guys are awesome. But for now, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe. Consider following me on Twitter, joining my Discord server, and checking out my other content if you still haven't yet. Till next time though, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.